this video is going to this video is going to be about the central limit theorem but more specifically it's going to point us to a few online resources that will hopefully give us a way to interact with the theory behind the central limit theorem so i'm going to show us two different resources one that i've put together and one that i've found that should help us out the first one um is at this url let's see if we can scroll in there we go there's the url for you to go to i'll let you type that out on your own and the web page looks like this when you first pull it up now the idea is that there is some distribution that you are theoretically sampling from and it has some mean uh, often labeled mu now the idea is when you click this button, take a sample right off the bat, is that each of these points is an individual observation that I often label X with a little subscript on it, say like X subscript N. So here, this is a sample of size 20. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Indeed, 20 observations, little blue circles, uh, not colored. And then this green point here is supposed to represent a single mean, specifically a mean from the blue circles, the original observations. So here is just one sample from this distribution, which looks normal up top. And indeed, it is. That's the shape of the distribution here. And if you just repeatedly click take sample, what's happening is first you took your own sample and then your friend took a sample of size 20 and then your friend's friend took a sample of size 20 and then your friend's friend's friend took a sample of size 20. And each of you is calculating your own sample mean. Now, because the samples are random, you're each getting a different sample mean. Now, uh, clicking through it like this is a little slow that's why they have this run stop button. So if you just click run, it will simulate random samples from this distribution and start dropping each one of these green dots, which is supposed to be a new sample mean collected by you or your friends. And slowly they will start to build up into, and now here's where the central limit theorem comes in, an approximate normal distribution. Now, there's going to be a little bit of error associated with this image because these balls shouldn't have to stack up exactly. They should be able to kind of create um, bins that are adjustable to the data points themselves instead of just to the width of the balls. So you're going to get these weird towers and these odd spikes right in the middle. But generally, I think you can see through that and see that indeed the sampling distribution here, this is the distribution of these many means, is approximately normal. Now, if we hit stop, you can change the sample size or you can change the mean of the population distribution. Or more fun, you can even look at a skewed distribution and see that the central limit theorem generally still holds. Even if you are sampling observations, these uh, blue dots with white in the middle, even if you're sampling your original observations from a skewed distribution, that is an asymmetric distribution, the distribution of many means will still be approximately normal. So I think this one is really good because it helps you see the um, original data and the means coming from those original data kind of stacking up. But this is not a real good, a very good plot to understand the normal distribution because of these weird spikes that aren't really there in the data, but only kind of there because of the strategy they've chosen to visualize the normal distribution. So the next, um, reference I'm going to point you to to interact with the central limit theorem can be found up on my web page. So if you go under the section meta 
and then click this interactive notebooks link. This is that web page I was telling you about that I've just now figured out how to create interactive notebooks. We're going to click on the one that says Central Limit Theorem. Now, you all should click here and follow the link and then patiently wait like two to three solid minutes. That is, get up and go have a snack or do something and then come back. I've already pulled up my own copy of the web page just so I didn't have to wait for it to load here um, during the video. Now, I try to break up my discussion of the central limit theorem into words, pictures, and math. The math is um, not full, is not super complete just yet, but I think it's good enough uh, for what we need in this course. I encourage you to read through the words on your own time. I tried to be short, but it's tough because there's a lot of like conceptual understanding that goes on under here. And then the pictures is where you can really start to interact with this. Um, Lots of this should look very similar to what we had before, except I'm now representing the mean of the distribution from which you are sampling as this um, peak of the triangle. Um, here you can adjust the sample size or the number of friends you have. And then down here is a histogram of the sampling distribution, the many, in this case 291 sample means, where each sample mean consists of 88 observations. So just as we saw before, even if you have an asymmetric distribution, we call it skewed, like the gamma distribution, then in the end, you still get something that is approximately normal. And as R increases, you should get something that's more and more normal. And as your sample size increases, pay attention to the x-axis specifically here, it kind of goes from like the bulk of it goes from 8 to 12. As your sample size increases, the width of this sampling distribution should shrink. And indeed, instead of 8 to 12, the bulk is kind of settling between 9 and 11 now. So you all are to interact and explore and see this um, as much as you can uh, on your own through picking some distribution that you and your friends are supposed to sample, are theoretically going to sample from, and then changing the sample size and how many friends you are repeatedly sampling with. Down here are the actual data, all the sample means. You can see they hover quite closely around the mean of the true distribution. And here is theoretically one data set from which a single mean was calculated. Uh, showing off this one data set down here just gives you an idea that all of these data are likely to have come from here. Meanwhile, all of these data are likely to uh, come from this distribution here. Here's the math down at the bottom. It should go along quite well with the notation we used for the proof. And this is generally how people write down what the central limit theorem is saying. The sample mean appropriately shifted, and then that quantity appropriately scaled is approximately normal as the sample size goes off to infinity. I hope you explore and find some fun tidbits about the central limit theorem. Maybe confirm to yourself that it works for symmetric distributions or asymmetric distributions called skewed distributions, just the same. It is a pretty magic theorem in that regard.